So we have more agency when we start to use tools like the Feldenkrais method, where you're taught to think for yourself, you're taught to, you're supported in having self-compassion, you're supported in on a weekly, daily basis, however often you do lessons, um, you know, you're, you're supported in finding new ways to think outside the box, new solutions uh, based on curiosity, not, not um, having it be forced. It's, it's the way children learn. It's a nonverbal way of learning. few things that replicate that in the world. I, I think that's one of the things that Feldenkrais does the best. So it replicates this form of learning that I used to call it organic, but everybody uses that word. It doesn't mean anything anymore, right? So the new way people are talking about these things, I think, is generative learning. In other words, you get an idea and it has its own momentum and it sort of propels you forward to the next thing that you're curious about. And then you get a new idea, you know, and a new one. And it just, and that's, and, and then you're in the realm of the aha moment that just happens on a regular basis. And I can't think of a more fun way to live. It's kind of a treasure hunt. <laughs> <laughs> treasure hunt. I love that. That's absolutely true. It's like very engaging, isn't it? And uh, I, I mean, if, at first I think, you know, it can be like the um, sort of like the beginning of realizing, oh, I have tension in places I didn't have, didn't know I had tension or I right. feel good in places I didn't know I could feel good in that. Those are, those are incredible discoveries, but then you begin to realize how much you can build off of it. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I know you're going to share an awareness through movement lesson, a brief lesson later, but I'd love to make a little uh, journey now into some of the other things that you use within your flow, Feldenkrais. Yeah. And that is uh, writing. You use some writing, don't you? Yes. So if you think of it like a, like a hub, like a, I guess the British call it a roundabout, you have these different roads that lead into this one circular area. If the if the center of the roundabout is, is consciousness, conscious awareness, what are we actually aware of? Because we can't know what we don't know, right? So I'm always interested in expediting um, how we can uh, go through changes, the changes that anyone encounters in a life, right? The, the changes from uh, being an adolescent to being a young adult to being a mature adult, those, they're, they're inevitable and variable cycles to life. How can we how can we support that? Because we don't live in these societies anymore where, you know, they're, they're, we used to respect the elderly and we used to have mentors and we used to have rituals and there used to be lots of support systems in other older cultures for how we move through life. But now we've kind of sort of distanced ourselves from all that. So that's a long way of saying at the center of this hub, I'm looking for things that, comp, that help um, uh, complete the feedback loop. So if we go back to the example of awareness through movement and compare that to writing, awareness through movement helps complete the feedback loop because our body has a proprioceptive system. It tells us what, what, um, whether we're upright, whether we're level, whether the ground is solid, whether we're going to fall over, whether we're um, within a, a range of <clears throat> balance that feels like homeostasis. And so it allows us to adjust and respond to that. So writing is the same way. Writing is a way of thinking on paper that allows you to see what your thoughts are and then to react to what your thoughts are. Because if you just think them, oftentimes you think the same thoughts over and over again and you and you just notice that you're, oh, there's that thought again, how annoying. And you go about your day and you, you know, go from point A to point B without having a chance to respond and to make any adjustments. Mm -hmm. 